Hey there, what's up? Welcome to Mahogany Suites. Make sure that y'all hit that subscribe button. I wanted to come to y'all and talk to y'all about the Joe Budden Podcast. It is phenomenal. In case you don't know, the Joe Budden Podcast is up for people. It is Joe Budden, who is a rapper, a great artist. Go check out his music. And now he is into media. So it's Joe Budden. It is Parks Music. It is Ma and it is Rory. And it's these four, as a collective, just makes great content. So, um, Joe Budden also has some other shows. He has Pull Up, which is produced by him, which you can find on his channel. He has State of the Culture on Revolt. And he also used to do, like, Everyday Struggle um, over there on Complex with Academics. But anyway... So, the Joe Bum Podcast streams on Spotify. It drops twice a week on Wednesdays and on Fridays. Then they also, I mean, Wednesdays and Saturdays. Then the visuals also drop on Friday on YouTube and on Monday, I believe it is, or Tuesday. But anyway, check it out if you have not. It is phenomenal. That's why I want to come and talk to y'all about. I love this podcast. I listen to it normally, like, maybe two times. Um, and then I also go and watch the visuals when they drop because, you know, sometimes you're bound to miss something that was stated out of an average three-hour podcast. And I used to, like, tweet them excessively. Like, even in between drops, I would go and tweet them about what I hope that they have on the next show. And we, like, would engage. That's the thing that I like about them is, like, they're interactive with their fans. Like, it's been times where I've even trolled them. Like, I trolled Ma before about wearing a pink sweater. He took it cool. You know, he he's not any – none of them are those type of celebs or personalities to wear. If you tweet them, you know, trying to cap on them or – your opinion that might not be in their favor. They're not going to block you for that. They're going to engage with you. They're funny, lighthearted. I even met them in person. The only one that I didn't meet was Rory, but I even met Ian. They're all cool guys. They came here to Detroit. I took my brother to um, their live show, their live podcast, which was great. But I don't tweet them anymore because I follow other reality TV shows. And when it airs and you engage or state your opinion, they will literally report your page. Them women are, like, just so fragile. So they were um, reporting my page all the time. I kept having to remake Twitter pages, start over. I just got over it. And so I don't really be on Twitter like that anymore. But I was thinking, like, you know what? I want to do Joe Button reviews. Not Joe Button specifically, Joe Button podcast reviews. So if y'all would be interested in that and will watch that, let me know because then I will start doing that. But anyway, let me get to my focus of the podcast. The podcast is already great and phenomenal. Like, if you watched it prior to, I say, the last six to eight months, you will feel it was great, phenomenal, didn't need any changes, nothing would have and could have made it better. But they took it up a notch. They took it to another level, and it is just even more phenomenal to me. Like, my mind is blown. Who knew that we needed it, and they gave it to us? First one is Rory. Um, before, Rory would be very defensive, very sensitive in his feelings. And I believe for most of us viewers, it would be comical to us, you know, like how sensitive he was when they would, you know, joke on him and stuff. He would just take it like very personal and feel like he had to prove something. You know, he wasn't okay with it. So even fans on Twitter would, you know, we'll poke at him. You know somebody sensitive about something. You kind of poke at it just to play with them or whatever. But anyway, he would take it very, very personal. What I noticed in like the last six to eight months, he does not do that anymore. Like he's very lighthearted. They make a joke on him. He actually even leans into it. Joe exaggerates a story about him involving him. He leans into it. He, you know, make jokes himself. He laugh it off. He let it flow. And I would have never imagined that something that simple from him being less defensive would have made it a hundred times better. Um, I believe that the changes maybe do. Joe had mentioned that he suggested therapy to Rory. And Rory, you know, took that advice, which is great. Um, seeing a therapist or, you know, someone who you can talk to, um, be a soundboard for you, give you great advice is always necessary and needed. So that was phenomenal. I'm glad that he did that. And plus, it, it showed that 
he has finally, and probably maturity in itself, this has something to do with it. Everyone, as they grow, as they learn, as they live, come into a place of knowing who they are, having confidence and um, power and self-control and just being content and knowing who they are. And every man especially has to reach that point where they know who they are as a man and are comfortable with that. And Rory has reached that. And I'm so happy for him that in his personal life, just him as a human being, has come into that maturity, to that growth, to that um, fullness of knowing who he is and being content and happy with that. So I am just so happy for him that personally he's reached that um, milestone, but also it reads well for the podcast. It's great for the podcast. The second one is Ma. Ma used to be like very wall up, defensive, sheltered, um, conservative, reserved, laid back. You know, he really didn't get much. He, uh, he used to be so cut and dry. Like he didn't, he's not, he don't make for a great conversationalist. I'll just say that not on the podcast because right he is in front of millions of people and it, you have to come to a level of vulnerability to be open about who you are and about your background and about your opinions even so he was not there before he kept everything real cut and dry and now he had just opened up so much like he's revealing to us who he is what he thinks how he thinks um to a degree you know that he's allowing to share more of himself. He's in a place now where he's willing to share more of himself with the listeners. And I love that. Like, that was just amazing to, you know, have an understanding of how he grew up, where he come from. Like, he even has shared with us his feelings and viewpoints in relationship with his father, um, him growing up. And I really love that. To me, that is phenomenal. That he came to a place where he's like, you know what? I'm really going to go ahead, open up, and share with the viewers. Because, yeah, you sit here with your friends. They know you personally, and they know even the surface level um, presentation that you present. But you're not sharing or giving any of that to the listeners. And he has begun to do that, and I think that's amazing. That made the podcast even more phenomenal. So those were two things that have taking the podcast to a whole nother level that I did not even know we needed in the last six to eight months. And I love it. I love the podcast even more now. So I also wanted to touch on a couple of things that they had discussed on the podcast. Was well, really only one thing that they had discussed on the podcast. I'm not even going to talk about the other ones, or I might just do them in a separate video of just my opinion concerning them. But Joe Budden had brought up the Ari Lennox situation where she um, wanted to take, uh, I wouldn't say a fan, because I guess they wasn't her fan since they insulted her, but someone made a tweet to her stating that to them she wasn't attractive, basically, to sum it up. That I believe that their exact words was that she looked like a dog or something like that. And Ari Lennox made it a race thing, and she made it a everyone thing of the between men and women thing, between black men and women thing at that, as if we aren't in a fragile enough position to have added stuff that technically don't even apply onto us. Okay, so this was one random person who tweeted her that basically she was not, they were not attracted to her, that she was not attractive. Um, race doesn't have nothing to do with that. They did not mention race. They didn't say, oh, you as a black woman is not attractive. They didn't, which I'm guessing that it had to be a black man because she made it about black men not being attracted or defaming black women. Well, race had nothing to do with it. And this person made one statement to you. Just because that black man was not attracted to you does not mean that he's not attracted to black women. He just felt you're not attracted to him, which he could have kept that opinion to himself, but he didn't. It's social media, as Ma stated on the podcast, stop giving tweeters, random people across the world so much power that you would um, give whatever they say that much weight to let it disturb your peace, your peace of mind like that. And true enough, that's easier said than done, but at some point, you have to come to the place of where you're comfortable in you and know who you are and don't give that stuff that much attention like that to ruin your day, your mood, you know? So, um, I be, Joe mentioned some key things, and I actually support and agree with him on this. 
Joe mentioned that um, he was offended by it, and I understand why. He was offended in the sense that you wanted to, she came and basically bashed black men for what one man said to her. She wanted to bash all black men, and she wanted to make herself and all black women a victim of basically, I guess, black men not liking, supporting, or um, loving black women, when that is not particularly the case at all. And Joe, so I understand him being offended by that. Um, Joe also wanted to bring up the point that he believes she's in a very insecure state. And I also agree with that. I'm going to tell you why I think that is. She has recently just came into a level of fame and um, celebrity. And I believe that her now being introduced into the industry and it's working, she has come up to to face the colorism that goes on in the industry and the racism, the discrimination, and the belittling of darker women, bigger women, for all sorts of things because the industry is ran by white men, okay? Just in case y'all didn't know that. Yeah, you see a lot of black people on the scene, black people running record labels and and, and all that, but it's the industries and in entertainment as a whole, even, even as in music, it is ran by white men. And they, we all know, have a European standard of what they deem beauty to be. And darker-skinned women do not fit on that list. Black women, basically, somewhat in general, do not fit on that list. But specifically, darker-skinned women don't. Full-figured women don't. And um, the full-figured thing is just across all races. The, the industry, entertainment industry, is not very accepting of women who have some curves and some meat on their bones. They are trying to... Well, people are forcing them to get over that. But the colorism, racism part is still very much alive in the industry. So I think that her coming into the industry and being met and, and seen blatantly and openly, because those people up in the industry know, they'll tell you, like, hey, you fat, you need to lose some weight. They will tell you, like, hey, um, you know, her, like, because a lot of us see, we see the magazine covers and stuff where we're like, hold on, they look 10 shades lighter than what they truly are and stuff like that. So I believe that her coming into the industry, she's being met with critiques that um, probably stem due to racism and better racism um, and colorism. So she's being met with critiques. She's being met with seeing and being exposed to women who are probably getting more, getting more attention, being more catered to because they are white or have a different hue or a different body type. And so I think being in competition um, to a degree with these other women who don't look like you and they're saying that the way you look is not somewhat the standard has made her very insecure. And I think the reason why she took it so this one man randomly telling her that he's not attracted to her. I think the reason why she took it so personally is because she looked at it like, okay, I'm being met and seeing all this critique, racism, judgment, belittlement in the industry. Well, right, these are white people. Fuck them. At least my own black men, they are attracted to me. I am beautiful in their sight, so screw with y'all. So I think she was using in her mind to fight the insecurity of saying, I'm going to have black men and their viewpoint and their standard of beauty be what holds up my self-esteem. And I think that she put that on all black men. So when that one black man told her, you're not attracted, that kind of crumbled what she was using as a um, a soother, a comforter. Oh, my phone I'm about to go get I think that that crumbled what she was using as a soother and a comforter against the racism and discrimination that she is facing in the industry. And due to the fact that it was so fragile on holding up her self-esteem on all the black men, when that one black man just said, I'm not attracted to you, she went in. So the other things that she wanted to say was, black men, no other race does this, but black men, this is the other, which that man mentioned nothing about race, like I told y'all, all he said was, I'm not attracted to you, you look like a dog to me. And bleh. so Joe said, um, first off, she's inaccurate with that because... It is it's the white man who made the term cunt that they use against their women. And that was one of the examples he gave. I'm not sure if he gave some other ones, but yes. Uh, across the board, different races of men, for certain women in their culture, they call names or view them a certain way. That does not mean that that's how they feel about all of them. It does not. So other men are not better than black men in any type of way. 
Okay, so if you're thinking that other races are treating their woman to some higher standard or some putting them on a higher pedestal than than their own, you're you're false. You're false with that observation. Like it's it's not true, and it's a shame that you would be indoctrinated and disillusioned to believe that. But um, that's what she wanted to say is. Black black men are the only ones doing this to this women, to their women. That's not true. It's absolutely not. It's trash men in every single race, and it is men who disrespect, disregard, and um, down their women of any race. Like, I'm, Katy Perry could probably tell you about a million tweets she didn't have from white men saying negative stuff about her. Like, get over yourself. So, I agree with him on that as well. Black men are not at some ratio different from other um, races of men and you are minimizing all of the millions of black men who support love and pit black women on a pedestal because I know that what's publicized and what's thrown down your throat and what's polarized is oh well black men have some disdain for black women it is not true if you looked at the statistics of marriage of black men that are married over 80 percent of them are married to black women okay if you look at the statistics for just as many unwed men but are dating over i'm probably sure it's probably the same it's probably over 80 percent of them are dating black women so just because they want to shove down your throat these, even in the industry, if you look at the industry, they shove down your throat these white, I mean, these black basketball players who are marrying or dating non-black um, women. But they are not the majority. If you look at the majority, the rest of the NBA, the majority of them are married to black women and are dating black women. And as a matter of fact, look at Tristan Thomas. Yeah, he got with Chloe, but before he was with Chloe, he was with a black woman. And he cheated on Chloe with a black woman, left Chloe for a black woman. Like, so... Even some of the ones that are dating or marrying white, it does not mean that they're more attracted to them, love them more, or or any of that. Men are attracted to every race on the earth. Men will have sex with every race on the earth. They are not caught up caught up on that or looking at it like that. You do have a few select black men who be like, oh, okay, they despise black women. But you also got to look at the fact that, number one, you don't want those anyway. Something wrong with them. That's more so they self-hate. Um, also it is, you can't hate none unless you first were in love with it. So if they have this disdain towards black women and like, oh, well, I'm done with black women. I'm only dating white or Spanish or whatever it is. Most of the time that comes because they were very, very, um, significantly hurt, betrayed, rejected by a black woman. So they want to take it out on the whole race of black women and they're going to a different race of women to soothe their ego, to... Um, to build them back up, make them feel better about themselves, while at the same time using her as a means to be like, okay, I'm exacting revenge on black women because they didn't want me or they hurt me or whatever. So basically my point about this is the majority of the men who um, do degrade or pit down black women um, to be with a white woman. It's normally because they're just using her to try and get back at black women because they've been deeply hurt. You can't hate some unless you were first deeply in love with it, okay? Um, or loved it, I'll just say that. So that's more so of a hurt thing, not really a, a real thing. Because you have men who date outside their race, and right? They're not, they date their own race as well as other races, and they're not belittling any of them because, like I said, men love all women, all races of women. And you can't sum up a whole race, black men and black women, and this uh, as to being toxic when one guy who didn't even mention race to you say he's not attracted to you. You're not going to be attractive to everybody. Everybody's not going to like you. You're That should be okay with you. You should be fine and understand the fact that just like you're not attracted to any and everything, everything ain't going to be attracted to you. So I feel, though, that what she did was pit the weight of her self-esteem on black men. And when that black man threw that shot at her, it crumbled her stability and her fantasy of believing, like, okay, well, screw these white men who are telling me I'm not beautiful enough or good enough. Screw these women that I'm seeing around who's getting the magazines covers, who's getting deals, or who, you know, among these clothes who they are glorifying or putting on a pedestal because I'm not interested in white men anyway. And that's the majority of the problem. When you run into women who are upset about 
um, black men dating out of their race or marrying out of their race, those women is normally because black women prefer to be with their own race and not actually attracted or are willing to marry outside of their race. So normally that's where it comes from, from them being upset about black guys they not a race or they just be upset about the fact that it's one of those type who are downing and degrading black women to try and make this non-black woman feel better about herself or to try and get revenge at the black women who he feel has rejected him abandoned him and hurt him so i just want to um come and share that jill button i agree with him she is drawing this out bigger than what it is she's trying to make it a race issue when it's not um as far as this one guy telling her she's not attractive, that's not a race issue. That is not a between the sexes issue either. And it is throwing all black men under the bus. It is um, defaming all of them when this is a personal issue that she's struggling with. And I wish her the best with that. I hope that she's able to heal and build her self-esteem up enough to where if a guy not being attracted to her won't bother her. A guy trying to throw a sleazy shot at her, she's able to let that roll off her chest. And I'm also hoping that while she's standing in the face of discrimination, racism, and, and favoritism in the industry, that she's bold enough to tap into her inner self, her inner soul, and knowing who she is as a woman and how great and beautiful she is. And it's only she needs to know it. She don't have to be validated, not by the white man and not by the black man either. That's all. Oh, right. So, back to my point. I was about to get off this video. Watch the Joe Button Podcast. It is a great, great listen, okay? And if y'all would be interested in me doing reviews of the podcast, please let me know in the comments because I will do that. We are at Tuesday right now. Tomorrow morning, a podcast is dropping that I will be listening to. If you want me to review it, let me know. Bye.